Hello, everyone. Great pleasure to be here. My name is Sang Yan Hong, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Maryland College Park. Today, I'm here to introduce one of the emerging security challenges that machine learning faces, particularly on how an adversary can exploit weak hardware level vulnerabilities to jeopardize machine learning systems. So, all of us learn from our ancestors, and so do I, because oftentimes, we know our ancestors provide the wisdom that can solve many contemporary problems, like this quote from Dr. Thales, a sound mind in a sound body, that emphasizes the importance of the physical well-being for psychological well-being. And in recent years, machine learning has moved from research labs to production. Therefore, the security of systems that include machine learning models increasingly become important. And this makes many researchers and engineers think about what are potential attack surfaces in machine learning. So to answer this question, research in the field of adversarial machine learning studies the attack surfaces, such as training data. An adversary can manipulate the machine learning models and behaviors by feeding malicious samples during its training. And once attacked, the model becomes like this Microsoft chatbot Tay that turned into a racist within 24 hours of its release by learning bad tweets. And another threat is the adversary of examples that aims to manipulate the model's prediction by adding imperceptible perturbations to the inputs. And you can see the most famous panda in the world that turned into Gibbon when we add small amount of noise crafted for this misprediction. So by studying those attack surfaces, we come up with the certified defenses which provide the mathematically provable guarantees such as data sanitizations or robust statistics against the poisoning or adversarial training or randomized smoothing against the adversarial samples. So now can we say that our models are safe? Let's revisit what Dr. Talek said, a sound mind in a sound body. And we soon realize there is a still a question remains unanswered. Do we place a sound mind in a sound body? Answering this question requires to break convention. And breaking convention requires a change in our perspective of looking at the problem. So the prior work mostly studied the security of a machine learning model, considering that as a standalone mathematical concept. And in consequence, we studied the model's robustness in an isolated manner. And more importantly, this perspective often overlooks the impact of the hardware or system level vulnerabilities. So let's think about this problem. Once we train machine learning models, we want to deploy them to the real world systems, such as self-driving cars, IoT devices, or cloud services. And for that, we require hardware and supporting infrastructure, such as CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs, and machine learning frameworks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, or objects, or databases and many other software components. And each of those components can be subject to adversarial pressure. So we must consider those new attack surfaces and examine how machine learning can become vulnerable by exploiting them. And for that, here I propose a new perspective of looking at machine learning models. I encourage the community to look at machine learning models as another computational tool or software running in many computer systems. And from this unique perspective, we can easily imagine that machine learning models may become vulnerable to existing hardware or software level vulnerabilities. And more importantly, those models may have computational properties that traditional tools do not have, which makes them particularly more vulnerable to hardware or system level vulnerabilities. So in this talk, we focus our scope on hardware level vulnerabilities. And what makes hardware attacks interesting is that those attacks can break mathematically proven security guarantees. And in fact, prior work shows the exploitation of hardware attacks against the cryptography, such as fault injection attacks or side channel attacks. But it is important to know that this is not because crypto algorithms are weak, is because hardware attacks were outside of their threat models. But one might say, isn't it difficult to perform hardware attacks on local machines? You need to break network defenses and to let the victim download and run your malicious software when you're exploiting it. Then there's an environment where an adversary may not face the challenges, the cloud. So because of this reason, many exploitations of hardware attacks has shown in the cloud. 
And there are clear benefits the attacker can achieve in the cloud. The first is the call location. In the cloud, there is a chance that an attacker and a victim's virtual machines share the same hardware, such as CPUs or memories. And second, with the co-located machine, the attacker can remotely exploit hardware attacks without the access to the virtual machines. However, in the meantime, we know that the cloud providers try to make their services secure against those hardware threats. So the strong attackers who have fine-grained control over their behaviors becomes more and more infeasible. And indeed, it will be challenging for a hammer attacker, for example, to flip a specific bit in the victim's memory because of the defense primitives deployed by the providers. So in the end, weak hardware attacks remain, which is usually considered to useless to cause serious damage to a system. However, my question is, is it true? Is it true that the weak attacks are always remain weak? In the rest of my talk, I will answer this question, how vulnerable are machine learning models to weak hardware attacks. I will introduce our research on the emerging practical threat caused by weak hardware attacks. And in particular, I'd like to show that the models have properties that conventional software does not have, which can turn weak attacks into significant threat to machine learning systems. So let's first look at Rohammer, a well-studied fault injection attack. So let's start from this. In 1990, a computer scientist, Dr. Jan Lekun, published the seminal paper titled Optimal Brain Damage. And this is the first work that reported the graceful degradation property by showing that one can remove 60% of model parameters without the accuracy drop. And immediately after that, researchers came up with a bunch of techniques based on this property, such as pruning to reduce the computational cost, quantization to reduce the network size, and even blending noises to improve the robustness. And all these techniques are possible with the negligible accuracy drop within 1%. And in security, prior work also showed that even if you try to degrade the accuracy, it is very challenging. They blend a lot of poisoning samples into the training data, cause a lot of random bit errors, or cause hardware for randomly, but the maximum accuracy drop that we can observe was 11%. And all these practices gives us a false sense of security about the neural network resilience against the perturbations. It's because they focused on the best case or the average case perturbation scenarios, not the worst case one than, uh, that an adversary can cause. So let's look at what's happening in detail. So here we display the standard four-layer convolutional neural network, which has two convolutional layers and two fully connected layers trained on MNIST. And the network has model parameters described as blue boxes, optimized in training, and are used in inferences to classify the data correctly. Of course, it has an accuracy of 99%. So once the model is loaded, this is how the parameters are located in the memory while the network is use. So you can see each of weights and biases take up the continuous address space, and the size of those parameters in memory is larger than that of the code for running, for running the model. So here I illustrated first an example of prior works perspective on a model's resilience against the parameter perturbations. Suppose that you manipulated five parameters in the last layer, and from the conventional perspective, the error is a small amount of change in the numerical representation of a value from 0.3 to 0.02, which has a negligible impact on the model's accuracy. However, what about the worst case bit flip? From the same parameter, an adversary can flip the most significant bit in the exponent from 0 to 1. Then the value changes exponentially and the accuracy of the model dropped significantly from 99% to 57% with that small change. So this illustration shows that the worst case perturbation, a single bit flip, can lead to a significant amount of damage to the neural network model. So now, but this is not sufficient to answer how much models could be vulnerable to bit flips. So we need to answer how much damage can a single bit flip inflict? And how many model parameters can inflict the worst case? So to quantify how many such a worst case exist, we flip all the bits in deep neural network models. We take a model, 
flip each bit in all the parameters and measure the accuracy drop over the entire test set. Here, we define the term an Achilles bit for referring to a bit whose flipping can cause the accuracy drop over 10%, which is the empirical upper bound presented by prior work. Then we also look at two things. A, we look at the maximum accuracy drop can be caused by a bit flip. B, we measure how many parameters are vulnerable in a model. Here we say a parameter is vulnerable when it contains at least one Achilles bit. So we first examine the eight convolutional neural network model trained on MNIST. They have different architecture configurations and we flip each of the 32 bit in thousands of parameters in a model. So in each of all eight models, there is at least one Achilles bit that causes an accurate drop more than 98% once the bit is flipped. And we also found that almost half of the parameters contain at least one Achilles bit that can cause an accurate drop more than the empirical upper bound 10%. So we also examined 11 larger models with different architectures and the analysis outcome was consistent. In all the architectures and the parameters that we examined, each model has at least one bit whose flipping can inflict the accuracy drop up to 100%. And almost half of the parameters that we examine are vulnerable. So what does it mean? It means that the neural network has this property of the grisly degradation. And also this vulnerability is general across many data set and architecture configurations. So now the question is, can a weak attacker exploit this general vulnerability, right? So we start from the space of the single bit adversary with the two axes based on the attacker's capability and knowledge. And in the vertical axis, the attacker becomes surgical when she can flip a bit in an intended location in memory. Whereas there is the attacker with no control over the bit flip locations on the other side. So in the horizontal axis, the white box attacker knows the victim models architectures and interners, knowing which parameters are vulnerable, whereas black box or blind attacker is not. So stronger attacker is in the upper right quadrant who knows which bit to flip in a model and can flip only that bit. But on the opposite side, there is a weakest attacker who doesn't know which bit to flip and cannot even control over the bit flip locations. So in this case, the probability of hitting an Achilles bit would be much, much lower. However, suppose that the weakest attacker flips multiple bits randomly in the same model. The probability of hitting an Achilles bit increases, of course, because half of the model parameters contain at least one Achilles bit. And in consequence, the attacker can turn into the stronger attacker. Now we evaluate the weakest attacker with multiple bit flips. We consider the typical machine learning de deployment scenarios in the cloud machine learning as a service, where a dedicated virtual machine is running under the raw hammer pressure. So we run our attack, raw hammer attack with this setup. I will not talk about the details, but you can check them in our paper. But in summary, the attacker randomly flips bits in the process memory. We consider multiple DRAM chips and sufficiently run many bit flip attempts. So our expected consequences are A, a process crash, B, hitting any bit that doesn't lead to any serious damage, C, or causing an accuracy drop over 10% by hitting an Achilles bit. And here is the summary of our research. In 62% of our attacks, the attacker causes an accuracy drop over 10%. And also the time it takes to cause the damage is at most within a few minutes. And further, our attacker can remain inconspicuous. We observe only six program crashes over the entire 7.5 bit flip attempt. So based on this research, now we can say that a weak row hammer attack is sufficient to cause serious threat to neural network models. So then we then move our focus on the side channel attacks, especially cache based side channel attacks exploitable in the cloud. We ask here how can an attacker steal deep neural network architecture by leveraging only side channel leakage? But someone will say that I agree, we already know the neural network architectures such as VGG, ResNet, etc. Then why does the attacker need to steal the architecture? Well, 
Then think about this architect architecture, for example. This network is automatically designed by an algorithm for searching architectures called a neural architecture search. And no one tried to steal this architecture uh, via side channel before us. So those architectures carry a lot of incentives to steal. First, unique architecture outperform the off-the-shelf architectures. For instance, EfficientNet is the currently state-of-the-art on ImageNet, and transformers are known to be the state-of-the-art on language tasks. And also, constructing a unique architecture takes a lot of time and effort. Running the search algorithm like NAS takes thousands of GPU hours, and even handcrafting unique architectures demand 10 to 15 experts. So in consequence, once unique architecture is found, they become intellectual property or treaty secrets. So now our initial question becomes, how can an attacker reconstruct a unique neural network architecture by leveraging only the side channel leakage? Let me show how we did that. So to illustrate how, how our algorithm works, I prepare a simple neural network on the left side. We assume our attacker utilizes flush and reload, a remote cache side channel attack that is exploitable in the cloud. If our attacker runs flush reload, the computational trace that she will observe while the network is processing only a single input looks like this. Now what attacker needs to do here is to reconstruct the victim's architecture and configurations from this tree. For that, we need to identify A, the connections between layers, B, the layer configurations such as kernel size, strides, etc. So this is challenging task because the search space is almost infinite and therefore prior work makes unrealistic assumption that the victim uses the off-the-shelf architecture such as VGG, ResNet, or etc. etc. However, our intuition is that perhaps one can reconstruct the architecture by exploiting deep learning computations. So let's see how we did that. We first identify the sequence of layer access while the network is processing an input. Then we can connect them one by one until we face the add operation, which is a binary operator. So since the add can be connected to any preceding layers, the problem here is that Multiple architectures correspond to the observed trace. But the solution is quite simple. We just populate all the candidate architecture feasible and then just prune incompatible candidates later on. So to eliminate, we reconstructed two types of information. First, the layer configurations such as kernel sizes, tries, and so on, and the input and output dimensions of each layer. So we extract them from the time it takes to process each layers. We know that deep neural network computations are implemented as matrix multiplications. Thus the time information is useful to estimate the size of the matrices considered in each multiplication. And moreover, we can identify the function calls in a matrix multiplication library, such as GMM calls, and the number of those function calls are proportional to the block size of the matrices. And from this information, we can estimate input, output, or filter dimensions in convolutional layer. Now we need to combine. So combining those timing information, our attacker can identify the input and output dimensions along with the layer configurations like, right on, like on the right side. So we then finally eliminate the incompatible candidate with this information. So, the reason why our reconstruction is possible because of the regularities in deep learning computations. So now the evaluation. We evaluated our reconstruction attack with two unique neural network architectures, Malcolm and Proxilis NAS CPU, and we consider machine learning as a service scenarios in the cloud. So in summary, we A, reconstructed both the unique architectures with zero error, B, and the time it takes to reconstruct is much less than the time to construct those architectures. So finally, from this noisy information, which is considered weak, extracted from the cache side channel attack, our attacker can steal unique architectures with zero error. Now, is your time to contribute? 
This research is still an understudied topic, so we encourage contributions from both academia and industry. So now we know that the neural network is not a standalone concept, but it's just a component that consists of computer systems. So we need to re-examine the interplay between the models and other system components with the security mindset. And with the security mindset, the vulnerability of neural networks to microarchitecture attack is still under studied topic. So we first need to understand what are the worst case behaviors when we design machine learning systems against those hardware threats. And the worst case could be different from what we have known so far. So moreover, we also need to examine whether computational properties that makes that deep neural networks have makes it possible for a weak adversary to inflict those worst cases. And lastly, system level defenses for machine learning models provide an incomplete view of security because weak hardware attacks are still causes a significant threat to the system. Thus, we urge the community to consider a hardware software co-design approach for closing the attack surfaces in machine learning systems. So considering our work and the future research directions that you will do, we believe this is the best moment to pursue the ancient wisdom, a sound mind in a sound body. Thank you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. And it, we also have a nice write-up about our research on this website, hardwarefail.ml. Please check that out. Thank you.